Okay, Chavra, we're going to jump right in, ah, jumping in from the deep end. And, and we're going to go straight, in, straight into your side, as we said. And we're going to start with beginning just to define the term. I understand that many of us, whether we've read or we haven't read and, and trying to get in touch with the different spheros, it's a, it's a tough avoida. It's not easy. But we're going to start with trying to understand the basic idea of the term Yisoyed. Yisoyed is the meaning of Yisoyed, Pashat, means foundation or the purpose or the, the, the avoda. The, it's the regular one. Yisoyed is the foundation. It means the connection. When the when when the holy Baal Shem Tov talks about midas yisoid, he usually says it. It's the, it's it's his kashros. What are you connected to? What do you want to be connected to? What are you driving to be connected to? But yisoid is not just being connected. Yisoid is when everything comes together in an incredible unity, creating an energy where all the different parts come together to create something mind blowing and explosive. That's a synergy that is created. When, when, for example, when the different pieces come together, when the, the Chesed and the Gvura and the, the Teferis and the Netzach and the Haid, they all join together in the sixth. It's Mamash, the sixth day of the week. It's the Arab Shabbos. It's as we're coming in, they all unite together to create something incredible. And this is an incredible synergy. This is the idea that when a husband and wife come together, the one plus one never equals two. It either equals one or it equals three or four or five or six, but it creates something much bigger. It's like when you become part of a team and you grow and you're working on a project, the team becomes something so much bigger than, it, than, than any of the individual parts were. And that's the kayak of Yisoyed, the kayak of the Tzadik. Right? We know that Tzadik is called Tzadik Yisoyed Olam. And we're gonna see more and more, we're gonna try to open up and hopefully understand these terms. In Yisoyed, we also have the concept of integrity. Okay, and Midas Yisoyed almost goes without saying that people are talking about integrity. Uh, it comes from Shmir Sabris, Shmir Sainayim. It's all in the, in, in the Avoida of connected to Yisoyed. All the spheres are represented by the different body parts. They're represented by many different things, but so Chesed would be the right arm and Gevur would be the left arm, Teferis is the torso, Netzach and Haid are the two legs, and Yisoyed is the sexual organ. Now it's important to remember that Everything in this world, every physical thing is none other than the physical representation of spiritual ideas. And this is a core concept that we must know. And so the truth is, is that one of the reasons why this is not something that I like to talk about open and publicly and just in an open forum with anybody able to get on is because it, they are very deep concepts. And we have to understand that just as in a male, there are different modes of that, that this, that this Aver works as, so too, it's, we have that within the sphera. There's different, there's different modes of it working, and everything is connected to, to, to its spiritual source. So hopefully as we open it up, let's, let's try to come to it with a, with a level of maturity and with a level of understanding to really try to see the depths of what is going on over here. In the concept of integrity, the midas yisoyed is where things come, mikoyach elapayel when things come from potential into physical reality or into actual reality, any reality, it, 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 whether it's being birthed from, from infinity into a thought in your mind or whether it's being birthed from a thought in your mind into words in your mouth or whether it's being birthed from words in your mouth into an action, these are all levels of birth. These are all coming mikayach alapoyal. And Yisoyed is that funnel, is that space where things come mikayach alapoyal. And when you want to create something, you have to create it in a way that is going to be ready and it's going to be set in a position to succeed. And that's one of the core ideas of Yisoyed, the same way that you wouldn't, um, you wouldn't load a gun, you wouldn't put a, a bullet in the chamber, you wouldn't cock the gun, you wouldn't point the gun at anybody. So too, Midas Yisoyed is this incredible creative power that we only point it in, in the direction, in the focus of when it's going to create something. And anything, whether it's Limar HaTorah or whether it's Diburim, we want to use it that it's going to, going to hit the, the matarat, to hit the, the point of the target. And we don't want to, God forbid, waste energy, waste ideas, waste kayach that's coming from above. It needs to be pointed in the right direction. We need to make our moments count. We need to value them. And you know, in, in the most simple way, we can say, like, if you want to get your kid to shul, Bizrat Hashem, after this whole corona thing ends, and you want to train them to come to shul and to be able to respect shul, you don't bring them when they're cranky. You don't bring them late at night. Ashkayach Yoni, welcome. 
putting up, he's got the, uh, the Rubschitzer tombstone. <clears throat> um, but that's why says that we need to be going in the direction. We need to be going in the direction um, and focusing on where we want to take this to. And this is the idea of a bris, the, the, that we're, 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 we're shomer, the space, that when we're bringing the kayak al it's coming out in the healthiest, most uh, um, powerful and potent way. Okay. Hopefully that was, that was a decent introduction to me to say aside. I understand it was not comprehensive, but it's going to have to do for now. That's right, Hashem. This space, the space of Yisayid where, where Shemayim and Aretz meet, right? We say, It's the place of call. It's the place where everything comes together, where heaven comes to earth, where Kayach enters into the pile, where Ruchnius comes into this world, where the spiritual world can be manifested into the world of, of this, into this world that we live in, and we can bring and make a unity together. <clears throat> so let's, let's begin to open up this idea of Tzadik Yisad Aylam, now that we understand a little bit that this space, the space where heaven is coming to earth, the space where things are coming into reality, we can begin to open up this concept called Tzadik Yisad Aylam. What is this Tzadik? As we said, we know Yisoyed means foundation, means connection. So we're going to start off with a little story. Let's jump into a story. I'm going to share it. I tried to do my best to, to, um, to prepare some of the different pieces that we're going to look at. So hopefully it will come out well. Hope you can see that. We're gonna start off with a simple Gemara in Baba Kama. Excuse me, Dafnunam al Aleph. And there's gonna be a theme here tonight because what we're doing with this Gemara, this Gemara is about Rabbi Khanin ben Daisa. Rabbi Khanin ben Daisa is going to be the paradigm for us of what a tzaddik is. And there's many stories in the Gemara about Rabbi Khanin ben Daisa. Rabbi Khanin ben Daisa was very unique um, in his sitkis, but we're gonna go through, we're gonna use him as the paradigm for for what a tzaddik is. Tan Rabbana, right? The Rabbanan taught us. There was a story with, there was this man, right? His name was Nechunya, and he would dig all the wells for all the Jews that would be Eile Regal to Shalayim. And they, um, this little girl, if you don't mind, just mute yourself. There was this little girl of Nechunya, and she fell into one of the wells. And, and because she fell into the well, Everybody's bugging out. They go running, of course, to the tzaddik, to Rabbi Hanina ben Daisa. And they ask Rabbi Hanina, what should we do? And he says, don't worry. Everything's fine. Right? Shari Shaina, the first hour, the first time they came, Amar Lahem Shalom. It's all okay. The second time they come, once again, he says, Shalom. It's fine. The third time they come, he says, she already came out. So they go running over to her, and there they see she's standing outside this pit. And they say, who took you out? So she says... There was a, a male ram that, was, that came, and there was an old man leading it, and he helped me out. So they came running back to Rabbi Hanina ben Daisa, and they asked Rabbi Hanina, they said, are you a, a Navi? Did you, how did you know this? How do you, like, we didn't know that you're a Navi. We knew you're a Tzaddik, a Chacham, but you're, that you're a Navi? So Rabbi Hanina ben Daisa says, no, I'm not a Navi. And I'm not the son of, of a Navi, but this is what I said, that something, that that tzaddik, Rabbi Nechunya um, Chayfer the, the man who dug those wells, something that he worked so hard to do, does it make sense that his own children would get hurt by such a thing? Can't be. Now, first of all, when I first read this, I thought, can't be? Why can't it be? Do we understand Hashem? We've seen pretty horrible things happen in this world. We've seen Holocaust. We've seen inquisitions. We've seen all sorts of tragedies. Who says? Where, where did Rabbi Hanina get this from? And then the Gemara continues, Amar Rabbi Acha. Rabbi Acha says, Even so, 
his son, meaning Reb Nechun Yechai Frasichin's son, died from thirst. So I know that when I, when, when, when I, uh, when I learned this Gemara, I was quite shocked. And I said, where, like, where do we get this from that this person, that, that he, sh he shouldn't die? And what's the difference between the daughter and the son? So I looked at, so you look into the Mepharshim, and many of the Mepharshim have all different types of ways of explaining it. That the daughter was in the well. The son died from thirst, and there's a difference between the, the effect of, of the actual dying in the well, but dying from thirst is, even though it's a similar idea, all sorts of different answers, and none of them were like rested with me comfortably. Until I found the Pshat, I don't remember, I, I tried looking for it today. I don't know if it was a Sheet of Mekubetza, a Yeshua, I don't remember who it was. If somebody knows, it would be, be great if you could return Machs to the Saveda. And, and he says, Pashat, is that when the son died, Rabbi Hanina Mandaisa was no longer around in the world. And this blew my mind. I said, what? What's the difference if Rabbi Hanina Mandaisa is around in the world or not? What does it make a difference if Rabbi Hanina is here? Either Hashem would do it or Hashem wouldn't do it. So for this, we're gonna, I'm going to ask you to, to bear with me. I know that what I'm going to say might be mechudash a little bit. Maybe, maybe you'll be like, no, this mamish makes sense. This is how I learned it from, from my Rabbeim. But it's a, little bit, it's a little bit of a stretch in the beginning. But hopefully we'll be able to piece the pieces together and be able to create this idea of what actually is going on over here and what, what, what was happening in this story and what's happening with Sadiqim in this world. There's another Gemara. Let's jump back into it. There's another Gemara that says like this. Here we go. Uh, so the Gemara is in Brachas, but and it's actually in a few places also, I believe in Tainus. The Gemara says that every day, uh, or Yatza Baskal, a Baskal went out. The whole world is sustained because of the, my son, Reb Hanina. And it, the Gemara continues and says, Reb Hanina, Reb Hanina sustains himself with one kav of caribs from, week, from Shabbos to Shabbos. So the Baal Shem Tev explains, Ki shvil hu tzinar, shepasach tzinar u shvil hashefa. V'zeh shekosov v'shvil chanina b'ni. The word shvil doesn't just mean because of, shvil also means in the channel of. That there's a channel, there's a tzinar that Reb Hanina ben Daisa opened, and that sinar is what gave Chiyas to the entire world to exist. So now let's understand this. Is that Hashem, Hashem, we'll take this back a little bit, we, and for those, of, for those that have been in the Chaburah, we, speak, we spoke about this a lot in the Kamida of Teferas, but we'll explain it again here in short. There's, there's a, we know Hashem, is above and beyond this entire world. He's he's beyond. He's beyond any idea that we have of him. He doesn't have any specific midas. He doesn't act a certain way. He doesn't have anything. He's he's infinite. He's nothing. He, he's beyond. The only way that he has certain actions and certain midas is because he chose to act in those ways. And he was megala to us that he chose. I decided I wanted to act this way, that way, and the other way. However, he also created an interesting issue. Is he said, I want to create a world where I'm lacking, where I'm not there, where I'm missing. But how will I be revealed there? I'm going to be revealed, I'm manifest in everything, meaning everything in that world is running, is, is being Mechaya from HaKadosh Baruch Hu himself. But, but it's, only, it's only in a hidden way. And I'm going to give over the power of how I will be revealed into the world, into the hands of the tzaddikim, into the hands of Adam, which is Yisrael, which is Amechulam tzaddikim. This is the kayak of the tzaddikim. That I'm going to give the kayak into the hands of Adam, and that the kayak of Adam is that Adam can create 
or create a tzinar of how I will enter into this world. And this is what we call a shvil, this is what we call a tzinar. That when we create a tzinar for Hashem to enter this world, when we create through our perceptions, through our understanding of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, we can bring him into the world and he will act and be manifest in this world according to the way that we see it. Reb Chanina ben Daisa, when he was in this world, he saw Hashem in a certain way. He understood the Ratz and Hashem. And because he understood Hashem in that way, therefore Hashem was channeled into the world with the perceptions that Reb Chanina ben Daisa had. Reb Chanina ben Daisa said, if Hashem, it, didn't, it doesn't make sense to me that Hashem would act this way. So Hashem wouldn't. Because there is, because so to speak, Hashem can't, or Hashem, not that he can't, Hashem won't unless we enable him. We can't unless Hashem gives us the chiyas. Hashem won't unless we give him the kli to do it. And this is what Rabbi Chanid Mandaisa was doing. He said this. When he's not around, he's not kaveya. His understanding, his perceptions of this world. And this is the concept, this is the, the, what it means, tzaddik yisoyed oilam. That the world, really, what creates a specific reality? What decides what a reality is going to be? The reality is decided in, as an, an interesting admixture, and we'll begin to open it up this interesting mixture that was happening, of an objective reality and a subjective reality. Meaning there's a certain level of the way things just are. We kind of have to learn how to work with that. And then there's also a way that I can affect and I can make reality respond to me in, 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 on a certain level. So now, on the most basic level, is that within myself, I can create a reality within myself driven by my own perception. So if I am in a positive mood, if I'm in a pos have a positive outlook, so my internal system will be positive. I'll have good healthy breathing, I'll have good healthy responses. It's internally driven by my own thoughts. When, when I, when I'm, under this, when I'm, when I'm in a, when I'm in a space, when I'm in a, a moment, when I'm in a, a, a clarity of, of, or when I'm in a place where I'm overwhelmed by chitzanias, so the things that are around me are going to control my reality. What enables me to become more of, let's say, a balabas or more of a, a tzinar of being able to channel Hashem into my reality and do it in this way. Give me one. What's going to change and the perceptions, what's going to create this reality of how I control it? Well, the, the, so to speak, the gatekeeper of my level of controlling reality is Yisoyed. Yisoyed, the sharish of Yisoyed really comes, it begins to come from the place of Gevura, which is Yira, right? In, in the place of Yira, the more that Ezehu Gibor HaKaivish is Yitzray. Somebody who's able to be Kaivish is Yetzer, which means to be Kaivish, your own perceptions. And therefore, you control the way that your perceptions are going to be run. You decide, you look into yourself and you say, this is a perception that I want to have. This is a perception that I don't want to have. I want to see Hashem in my moments. I don't want to see Hashem in my moments. I want to see... Um, you, you know, goodness in the, in, in the world around me. All of this is the gatekeeper for me to say aside. The more that I control myself, the more that I control my Yetzer, and this is greatly revealed, Dafka, in what we call Shmir Sabris, um, this is the, 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 the gatekeeper for all Tzadikim. Um, the, the Zayar says, what's a Tzadik? A Tzadik is man the not Abrisai, someone who's Shemir is Bris. I've heard from, from, from Tzadikim, they've said that the, the, the shame of tzaddik can only be for somebody who's still able to be um, sexually active. And, uh, and, and that's, without that, you, you, you can't have the shame tzaddik on you. You can have other things, but the shame tzaddik refers to some man did not abrisoy. And somebody who's able to have a certain level of self-control and is revealed in this place of self-control, in this place of avoida, in this, in this reality. And the more that somebody's able to control his reality, the more that he sustains and he's able to decide where it's going to be, the more the power of his mind can control the sinar and create a healthy shvil for the entire world. The more that he's affected by the outside world, the less his perceptions are kaveya. So, so we have, we're gonna have, we're gonna, we have two things. One, the first level is being able to control 
and strengthen the ability to that my perceptions can control the reality of how Hashem is going to enter into this world. That's the idea of the tzaddik. That the tzaddik is said Ailam, that he becomes the foundational perceptions of how the world is going to work. And the truth is, is that this is not just by tzaddikim. This is by everybody. It's all Adam. This is the Kayach of Adam. We know that Rabbi Nachman was one to mention, but many other tzaddikim mentioned this as well, is that there are, he said there are some tzaddikim that are out there that the mamish can do miracles. And the only reason why they can do miracles, not because they're big tzaddikim, it's because people believe in them. That's, in, that's in, in, in incredibly, you know, mind-blowing. That a person, that if there's enough people that believe in something, the idea of a group consciousness is a very powerful thing. If any of you have experienced it in, in a small group, you can see how powerful it is. And in a large group, if you get together by, you know, and that's why, you know, the big CM Ashas is an incredible thing. That, that group consciousness, when you have 90,000 people all saying Yiskada, Yiskada, Shemei Rabba at the same time, is an incredible, incredible giloy. And there's Dafka, a specific giloy that we even make a bracha on, a, on if there's X number of people all together in one place at one time. The Vilna Gain said about Eretz Yisrael that, that it, when 600,000 Jewish people, whether they're Shemer Shabbos or not, when men, women, children, 600,000 people in Eretz Yisrael, it's going to change the perceptions of the world. And that's Ma'ab Kachav, that's what happened. In this, in this time of year, in, in 1948, what they, they were coming in and they mamish one boat after the next. And these people were not necessarily Shemr Shabbos and they were not necessarily Yerei Shemayim, but they came to Eretz Yisrael and having 600,000 people in Eretz Yisrael already changed the, the reality and the world recognized. The world came to a level of, per, the, uh, the, the, the world perception changed in a very clear way. And this happens many times. This is the Kayach, it's very powerful. This is, the media has a very powerful Kayach to be able to control the minds of men. And that ability to control the minds is so powerful and it's so intense, so to speak, that we have to, we have to really watch this. You have to, manda nata brisa means also what's going on in your mind, what's going on in your speech, what's entering into your eyes, what's entering into your ears. What are we, what are we ingesting? The second aspect is why should my perceptions control other people? Meaning, why should Reb Hanina's perceptions affect this girl? His perceptions can affect, I guess, a reality of this world, but who says that it should control the whole world? So on this, we see that that's, that was, once again, the line, which I didn't bring the Gemara, but, but we brought from the Baal Shem Tev. What the Gemara says is that Reb Hanina ben Daisa is that the tzaddik, when he can choose to make, his, instead of his own peckle, instead of his own uh, pain, instead of his own story, he doesn't make it his own story. He makes the world his story. When he goes to Davin and he says, Rafaino, he's not thinking about himself. He's not thinking about himself and his wife and his kids. He's not thinking about his extended family. He's not thinking about his community. He's thinking about the whole world. He's traded in his own, his own self for the klal. His own self, he mamish sustains with kav charuvim. But the whole world is running through him. Because the more that he gives up of himself, the more he can trade in his own perceptions, he can then affect the entire world's perception. By trading in, by trading in this, this, this aspect, by giving the, the, the larger, the, the, you know, trading it in for the, the larger idea. I think that we can maybe explain this a little bit. Um, you can call me out. I don't know. I just thought of this. So I don't know if it's, if it's fair to say it, but, but we have it in Avas. It said, Rabbi Gamliel says, <clears throat> you should treat Hashem's will as your will. In order that he treat your will as his will. What's Hashem's will? Hashem's will is that you should watch over yourself, that you should keep away from a virus and, and, and do mitzvahs and, and control yourself, meaning you're controlling your own will. And that way he'll treat his will, his ratzen will become your will, which will become your tzinar. Meaning you, then the tzaddik then can create the tzinar of how Hashem will come down because he, he's mevatel himself to the ratzen Hashem. Now the way that he perceives the world, the way he perceives reality becomes the reality of how the world is going to be. And on the flip side, is batel ritzaynicha pnei ritzaynai. Be mevatel your ratzen in order that he is mevatel the will of others, right? 
And this bittel of your own will could be, we can say it's mevatel, your own things that you need, meaning davening for your own self or davening your own reality. And that way, your perceptions will mamash become the whole world's perception. I don't know if that's a fair thing to say, but to me, it mamash, it clicked, at least for tonight. <laughs> um, and, and, and I think that it mamash, it, it was like, it gave me a new understanding of that, of that, of that mission and amas. And once again, this dual reality of knowing when to be on, when to be off, is expressed mamish in that aver as well. It's this idea, and 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 in the in 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 the different shamus that are associated with the different spheres, there's two names that are, are connected to the the to the sphere of Yisoid. One is called Kel Chai, and one is called Kel Shakai. And Kel Shakai refers to Misha Emer Le'alam Dai, which is a bechina of being able to control yourself when not to. When, when to be able to hold, with, to withhold yourself, to be able to say, die enough, this adkan, I'm not, I'm not going past this point. I'm not going to let my mind go to just get controlled by any random thoughts. I'm not going to let my eyes just look at random things. And the other side is Kelchai is giving the chiyas to the world, giving, being able to draw down the life force, the shefa from my Kodesh Baruch Hu into this world. And through this, the, the tzaddik becomes the foundational pillars of the entire world, and the entire world can stand on this. And Bezra Hashem, the goal is that as we build up these perceptions, and as more and more people share in these perceptions of the tzaddik, or what it means to be a tzaddik, right? Which is again to which tzaddik the emunasa yichya, right? Tzaddik in his emuna, his emuna is his perceptions, his beliefs that he has yichya. He brings chiyas down to the world. That's the idea of the tzaddik, and every one of us really on that level is really a tzaddik. And as we build up these perceptions, we don't even need so much to, to hit a tipping point where those perceptions can change the world's reality. I mean, look, in the last few months, the entire world has a new, new level of perceptions and new realities that we're all thinking different, completely different thoughts and ideas than we were a couple months back. So, and this is what we're this is what we're trying to do here. We're trying to open up this 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 place of Yisoid, to be able to open up this energy, the sadic energy. I'm going to open it up for a minute. If anybody has any questions, they wanted to uh, ask. Anybody? Are we clear? Are we good? <clears throat> Okay, nice. So I'm going to continue. Gewalt. Gewalt. So Ezra just said that Rabbi Tzaddik says that he didn't have children. We know Rabbi Tzaddik didn't have children. Our, my elder, our, the race, Elter Zayda from the Fogel side, he, was, he lived, grew up in Rabbi Tzaddik's house. They said he didn't have children. So he'll be able to bring the book of Paiket Akaris to the world. And because of that, women who learn his book will, get, will have children. So we see this. Isn't, isn't, oh, wild, wild. Um, beautiful. Thanks for sharing that. Okay, we're going to jump straight into the, next, into the next piece, the next step, which is I want to begin to open up some of these pieces together. So first, we'll start off with, with a um, fun Gishmaka Gemara. You know, these stories, these stories of Rabbi Hanina Mendoza. So a couple of them that I brought over here. Uh, there was one day that his daughter, he comes in and he sees his daughter was sad. And he says, my daughter, what are you so upset about? So she said, I, the, the, I mixed up the vinegar and the oil and I went to go light the candles for Shabbos. And Gewalt, I put vinegar in there. And he says, my daughter, mach patlach. What's the big deal? Misha amar l'shemen v'yidlaik, v'yomar l'chemetz v'yidlaik. And that's mind blowing. What? How could he do it? And once again, we see that when the tzaddik's on the level, he, he is he creates the reality. This is what we say: tzaddik geizer v'ashem mekayim. What does geizer mean? Geizer means first of all to make a gezera to decree something, but also means to carve out, to create a, a tzinar. When the tzaddik makes a tzinar, Hashem is mekayim that tzinar, and he sends the shefa down it. He, this is how the tzaddik wants to perceive Hakadosh Baruch Hu in the world at this time. That's how Hashem's going to take it. And it's just going to come down, boom. Tzaddik Kaiser, the Tzaddik says, Mach patlach. it's okay, it's the same thing. We can mamish do, uh, you know, light vinegar and it's going to be fine. 
Another one, Abkhanina ben Daisa says, Abkhanina ben Daisa, he had, he had a whole bunch of goats. The Gemara explains later on why he had all these goats, but he had a bunch of goats. And somebody said that they're affecting their property. Abkhanina ben Daisa said, no, it can't be. He says, if my goats are actually the ones that are causing damage to your property, then let the, the bears of the forest eat them up. But if not, let each one of my goats come home with a bear on its horns. <laughs> Mind blowing. They all came home that day with, with bears, carrying bears on their horns. Another time, there was a woman, there was a woman who, who the beams of her house, she, I guess she's a poor woman, she had a, was building a house and, and the, the central beams of the house didn't, weren't large enough and, and the house was, I guess, in danger of imploding. And so she, he looks at her and he says, what's your name? So she says, my name's Eku. So he says, Eku, let the beams grow. And the Gemara says that the Imamish came out, that they were extending out an ama on each side. The Marashah says, Dafka, because he wanted to reveal the, the reality that, that when a tzaddik is geyser, when a tzaddik says something, the physical reality just jumps to it and accepts it. Even though this, we, we say, Hayam Ra Vayana, what did the Ma Ra Hayam, what did the Yam see when, when, the, when the sea split? It's all Atma Yosef, Yosef, it's all the Tzadik, it's all Manda Nata Brisa, it's all one that was controlling and said, if he can change and control his Yosef, if he could change his perceptions, allow the reality of Hashem to be controlled and to be revealed, then Gavalt, I can also change my reality. <clears throat> so I want to share with you another story before, right before we jump into this, this wild, wild Torah. This is a piece. <clears throat> we're going to go into this piece from the Chesed Lavram, but before that, I'm going to share one, one amazing story. Um, there's, there was a Yidla in New York, and he was not feeling well. This was about 50 years ago or something, 40, 50 years ago. He wasn't doing well. And he, he went to the doctor. The doctor checked out and he had an, a heart issue. And I didn't know what to do. It was a very, very dangerous surgery. I don't know if the surgery maybe now would be less, would be more, more common. But Misa, he was having, it was this dangerous surgery. And he went to Rabbi Moshe Feinstein. Rabbi Moshe Feinstein began to ask him all sorts of questions. What's wrong with what, what's the issue? Let me see the medical report. What did the doctor say? What exactly? He started asking so many detailed questions. Yeah, I was getting like, what's the deal with this? And so at the end of the whole thing, Ramesha looks at him and he says, you need to go to the Ribnitzer Rebbe. Ribnitzer Rebbe? Like Ramesha? Like you're, I'm not, I don't, I ain't liasik v'chassidim. Like, what do you want from me? He says, no, no, you got to go to the Ribnitzer. And when you go to the Ribnitzer, Tell him all the questions that I asked you and tell him all the answers that you gave me. So he said, okay. Comes to the Ribnitzer, comes in, and he says, you know, Shalom Rebbe, I'm here because Ramosha Feinstein sent me. Why did Ramosha Feinstein send you? Because I have a condition with my heart. What's the issue with your heart? Well, this is the problem. Ramosha Feinstein asked me this, I answered this. All going through the whole thing, and the Ribnitzer is looking at him. <clears throat> the Ribnitzer says, you want to live? So he says, yeah. He says, okay, you'll do everything that I tell you? He says, yeah. He says, okay, I want you to pick up and move to Yerushalayim. <clears throat> he asks the guy, he says, you have kids? He says, no. He says, okay, you're going to go to Yerushalayim, you're going to have a, child, a son, and you're going to name him Ovadia. Okay? So I don't know if he went to Yerushalayim first and had a son and named him Ovadia, and then he went back to the Ribnitzer and asked the, for an explanation, or if he asked it then and there, but he explained like this. I'm going to elaborate just a little bit more. There's an idea that, as we said before, the Rabbi Hanina Mendoza, that his perceptions were Kaveya reality. This isn't just with Rabbi Hanina Mendoza, this is with many tzaddikim. But different tzaddikim live differently, and in their unique lives, they control a specific Indian. We're going to get into this, we're going to see more, Bezra Hashem, in the Sefer, the Chesed Lavram, understanding how different neshamas control different inyanim. A tzaddik that, that, that's big in Nigla, like Rabbi Moshe Feinstein, when he said something, when he said a psak halacha, that was kiveya, the reality, that even the Bezdin Shomala accepts Rav Moshe's psak, especially in America, right? Um, you know, almost everybody, even, even the Hasidim, you know, I think many of them um, started keeping 
Shabbos when it comes in, and, and many many of the, the, the Litvaks keep Shabbos until 72 because of this. The idea, deal, I think, I don't know the, the details, but I think there was a deal between Ramosha and the Satmarov. But they made a deal. The point is that Ramosha's Psak in America is Mikubal. You can't argue on it. Even though others could say their own Psak, and maybe, you know, different, and in Dayan Don El Bamasha in Evrois, but Ramosha was Kavea the reality. The Ribnitzer said that, or I think the Ribnitzer said, is that in Eretz in Yerushalayim, Rabbi Vajim Bartanura is one of the tzaddikim that his perceptions are kaveh reality. This guy had an issue with his heart, and it was a machlekes whether it's considered a trefa. Most people held that his issue was a trefa, and that you're going to die within the year. Rabbi Vajim Bartanura was the only one who held, or was one of the few that held, that it, that it's not a trefa, and that you can live with it. So he said, if you go to Yerushalayim, you can live with it. But I, as we're going to see soon, there's an Indian that you need to be connected to that tzaddik. Well, Rabbi Vajim Bartanura didn't have any children. So this guy, by naming his son of Vajja, bind, binding himself with, to this tzaddik, by being Mamshech, his name in the world, and bringing that, whatever resonance it is, that is brought down when we name a child after, after a tzaddik, that connected him to the tzaddik, and now he Mamshech lived a beautiful, happy life. Could be we could also say that Rabbi Moshe Feinstein needed to send him to the Ribnitzer because the Ribnitzer maybe had, had certain control of spiritual in Yanim that in, in Mister that maybe Rabbi Moshe felt that his, his sending this guy to Eretz Yisrael to do this whole thing would work. But, you know, Rabbi Moshe felt that if he would send him, that wouldn't be the right, the right way. I don't know, but could be, could be. Yeah, this story blew my mind when I heard it and Mamash fit in with this whole thing. Any thoughts or questions? I'm going to jump, we're going to jump into this Chesed Lavram. <clears throat> if you'd like to ask any questions, now would be the good time. Wow, welcome everybody. It's so good shmak to see. Mola if, if you have, if you have, if you have for showing your videos, it's nice to like when I peek up to see your videos on, you get to see each other. Okay, we'll continue then. <clears throat> Maybe I'm just talking to myself. Who knows? Um, okay. No. <laughs> Enjoying it. Anything you just didn't see. What? We're all here and enjoying it very, very much. Ah, uh, shkoyach. Shkoyach, much obliged. Yes, it's uh, Mamasha Gewalt. It's Mamasha Gewalt. Gewalt, in honor of the Holy Reb Naftali of Rabshitz, the Schuto Yagen Alenu, Valkal Yisrael, Amen, the Chaim Eden, this is Hashem, the His Neshama, and he should have an Elias Neshama on his yard site. And we should all have Elias with him. Amen, l'chaim, l'chaim, amen. L'chaim. Ah. amen, amen, amen. Okay. This sefer that we're going to read from, in, in the Keser Shem Tov, uh, number 17, he brings down a short bit from this sefer, the Chesed Lavram. Chesed Lavram is, an, is the name of a multiple swarm, but this was a Talmud of Reb Chaim Vital. And it's a very deep and beautiful safer. Didn't learn a lot of it. The pieces that were brought down, I trailed back and got to look at the whole piece. That's what we're going to do right now. So let's share the screen again. In honor of the Holy Rebbe Naftali Tzvi. Ben Rebbe Menachem Mendel. Okay, this is in the Chesed Lavram. So it's divided into a few different, I think, three different parts. One part is called Evan Shesia. In the Evan Shesia, there are different... Mayanot. Uh, so we're going to, especially for those of us that haven't been to Mayan, ever, we're going to jump into Mayan Bays, Nahar Mem Dalad, and Bez Hashem, let Hashem open our eyes and let these, these words of the Tzaddikim enter into our minds and hearts. I, I just have to add, eh, no, nah, I'm not going to go off track. Okay, so Nahar Mem Dalad, Levar Minei Tfilois V'Iun HaKavona. Ha'inyin, ki ha-tfilo shehi avoide shebelev, Tfila, which is work of the heart, can be for a person from two angles. The truth is, is that he only says one of the ways. I'll tell you the other way. The, other, the first way is when, you, when a person davens and they say, Hashem, I need money, I need health, I need good things, when we're asking for things for ourselves. The second way is instead of thinking about your own self, you're thinking about drawing the shefa, from Kut into what we call the Malchus, into 
the Shekhinah, to, to be Mekayim, this world, to reveal the world. The world should be, uh, you know, set up in Malchus Shakai. It shouldn't be a Malchus of the Sitra Achra. It shouldn't be a Malchus, it shouldn't be an Olam Asiyah that we're, that, that, you know, that we're dealing with physical reality and we don't, we don't see HaKadosh Baruch Hu Shemamesh, be lit up from Hashem. So we're davening, and, the, the, and this, there's two forms of tefillah. One form of tefillah is asking for things that we want, and the other form of tefillah is when it's not about me anymore, but I'm davening for the Shechina. We did a whole, uh, a whole chabura on that, and it's, uh, we recorded it, so you can check that out. And Mamish connects a lot with everything we're talking about, but we're, we're going to leave all those in Yanim to the side for right now. Ba'ayved al-derech zeh. Ba'ayved al-derech zeh. And somebody who's ayved Hashem in this path. Ein kavanoseh b'tfilaseh b'rchoyseh v'ladvar magashmiyam. He's not thinking about his own physical needs or physical needs b'chlal. Rak al mazay nashchino v'kishutea. Rather for sustenance for the shchina. Ba'alzeh nemar. And this is what it says in Avas. Al tiyu ka'avadim ha'masham shin esarav al-manas l'kavar pras. Don't serve Hashem. What's the service? The service is tfila. Don't do it with the intention to receive a physical sustenance. <clears throat> now, when somebody davens and they're davening only for taking ashchina, tefila kazu ain't a miskabel as alyde malach matat shu evet. It's not miskabel, but we know there's this, there's this angel called malach matat, and this malach matat, he is his job is to so to speak run the physical world. Now. It's so, It's basically, it's like a separation. Instead of Hashem himself, so to speak, controlling and dealing with the physical in Yanim, he set up this guy, this angel, to take care of, of the world. Now, if you're davening for your own needs, then you're going to bring the Malach Matat, the Malach Matat is going to have to give it to you, and then you get it. If you're davening for taking Ashkina, it doesn't go to this Malach Matat because it has nothing to do with him. His job is only when you're asking for, for a couple dollars. So he has to take care of it. He's Hashem's memane, memune on, on those in Yanim. This connects also, we know that, that it says that when you're in Eretz Yisrael, there's no sar that's shaylet on Eretz Yisrael. So a person who davens in Eretz Yisrael, Sphilus goes straight up and brings a nachas ruach to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. In Chutz Laaretz, there's, there's different sarim, and the tefillas don't go straight up. And this is what the Shlob brings down, that this is what Yaakov Avinu said, that when he was in Chutzar, it's when Rachel Imenu came to him and said, um, Yaakov, can you please daven for me for kids? And he looks at her and he says, you're, you're missing the point. My, my father and my grandfather, they daven for children because they were in Eretz Yisrael. And therefore, we know Chazal say, Hashem has a desire for the tefillahs of tzaddikim. But that's only in a place when he, when he's, when he enjoys the tefillah. But in Chutzar, it's, there's no Hashem, and that's why his answer to him was Hatachas Elekim Anaychi. So Pashat means, am I in the place of God that, I, that, that I'm holding back kids from you? But on a deeper level, the Shlach says Hatachas Elekim Anaychi, meaning, am I underneath God? Am I directly there? I'm, uh, there's, 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 a, there's a Malach over here. There's other Sarim that are, that are cutting me off. My tefillahs aren't going straight to Hashem. So Gewalt, back inside. Utefillah Matachu Ever. Matat. He's the officer in charge of all the physical things in this world. The Kabbalah Sashefa, Al Ba, Al Oila Matach, and Agashmi, and all the Shefa that's coming down to this world has to go through him. Utfila Zu, however, this Tfila says the Holy Chasid Lavram. She'ain Ba Chelek Gashmi, that there's no Chelek of physicality in it, in it at all. Einaike Eved is not like an Eved, and therefore it's Elek Ben Hameshamesh Aviv. It's like a son who's serving. His father, Shaloy al Manas, the Kabbal Pras, without any intent for any, any Pras. This doesn't come to Malach Matat, who feeds the Malchus, rather, it goes straight to Midas Hayasoid. Amnam, Mashapir Shu Rabbi Seinu Zal Shia Adam, Begimel Rashenis Ke'evid and Masad Shevach of Nir Rabbi. Says, I, it says that a person should prepare and do the first three brachas as an Eved. Listen to what he says. Hainu Bevchinas Adam Shu. This is only for someone who's mamash like an Eved in his davening. Almanas the Kabul Pras, the Hainu Akavana Gashmias, the Lakach Schar Sachir Nikrat Filahi. This Tvila is called payment for, for wages due. The Hasachir, who's the guy that you're paying off? Umalach Matat, Shu Sachir Lan Hagas Atachdoinim, that he is the hired hand. Um, for the for the lower for the lower worlds, Uscharay and his reward. What's his payment for feeding and for taking care of this world? Hu atfila, la shpia an hagat achdaina. 
to, to be mashpia for this, this world. And therefore, he's the one who's makabel this tefillah in this world. Mind blowing. Let's continue. Bez. Amnam. Inyan hakavana betvila. So now he's going to begin to get into this. What's the kavana of tefillah? Da, you should know. Liyois adam chelek leikami mal. Know that the way that a person should have kavana and davening. We're going to explain now how it is that a person should have kavana and tefila. Sorry about that. Is that a person needs to grab onto the chelik alikami mal He has to grab onto that godly piece inside of him and go level upon level, madrega after madrega, to work his way up the ladder. Hine shal shelas hanizgar ties sulam shaboy talis iris masav. This shalshelis is going to be a, like a, loud, a ladder that he slowly moves up level after level through his actions until he mamish creates a yichud ajet siyachadena spheris al yonas ayaday until he's able to make an alignment of the spheris in him. And this is what we say that he, uh, sula mutzav arza. We are the sula mutzav arza. The, the tzaddik himself, he is the one who his feet are on the ground and his head is in the clouds, and he needs to be the 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 ladder. As we, that's what it says by Yaakov Vinu, Malachim, Oilim, Biyardim, Boy, they're going up and down on him. This is the connection. Adam is the connection between all this. We're going to get to this right after, but this is the idea is that Adam is an Oilam Katan and all the worlds are, 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 are in him. All, all the, all, we, we, we traverse all the Oilamais. We're Achelik Elikami Mal, that's our highest place, but we're Mamish, we're created from Afarm and Adma, so we're created from the dirt, most physical aspect of, of, of physicality. Not from Aish, not from Ruach or Mayim. We're created from Afar. And that's because we are able to extend our hands and Mamish control and, and go to all the different levels. When we fall, we Mamish go all the way down. But when we go high, give out, we're all the way up. We're compared to the dirt and we're compared to the, to, the, to, the, to the stars. And when we can create this alignment, Uboy, and in that tzaddik, and on this ladder, and on this channel, Yim Sheikh Shefa Bracha El we channel the Shefa of Bracha. Through the spheres down into this world. Until a mamish infuses through his physicality and through the physical world. And according to the amount of, of, uh, 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 that he is aroused and he's mitorer, the hechsher amaisa, and according to the quality of his actions, so too, according to the level that we are on our head, and according to the actions that we do, that's what's going to open up the tzinar, this highway, this channel, this flow from above, and that's how the shafa is going to come down. And so too, according to the place where your neshama is able to <clears throat> grasp, so too you're going to have the different madregas of your tzinar. And that's going to consequentially control the ha'ara of the hashpah coming down from above. The im kol zeh loy tia madrega sa'ara nishba yidei echad madrega sa'ara shayi nishba yidei zulasai. You should know that no two people are, are alike, and every person needs to bring down their own Indian, and therefore we need every single yidla, every person to do their avoda. He says, but you should also know v'chein loy apagam anasa yidei echad kipagam anasa yidei zulasai. Don't think that the begam that's done by one person is like the same as the next person. Different, different people do make different begamim. You don't know. Maybe for, for one person, <clears throat> you know, if something can be really bad. For another person, it's not. And it's scary, but you have to know that you're the only one that can fix your issues. No one else. You can't fix somebody else's begam. The ain takanil begam ela yidei atzmai. A person needs to take responsibility for his own life. Know that the challenges are, you're given, they're for you. And either you do tshuva, you're going to have to come back and do it again. Hashem is very patient. So, but we're going to have to do the work. By the way, this is brought down. This is the Gemara at the end of that first Gemara that we brought down about that second son, the guy's son that died from thirst. Um, the Gemara continues over there and says, and brings down this Pasuk, that around Hashem, it broils fiercely. There's wicked fires burning because it's, it's, it's intense. When you enter into the, when you enter into the Echol Malka, it's not Pasha. 
והעניין, כשהיא מונה הצדק מהסויס אחד מן המצווה, יעמד גדולה שפע אור הראוי ליוס נשבע ידי, when a person, when a צדק doesn't fulfill a מצווה that he's supposed to fulfill, גבלת? It cuts down on the שפע of אור that's able to come down. אם היה עשה, אז then if he would have done it. מה שלא היה חסר אין כל כך, אם היה מניע ממנו איך מן הרקם, if a simple guy, you know, an empty guy who's doing a lot of avarice and he doesn't do a מצווה, even if he, שאפילו היה עשה, even if he would have done it, לא היה נשבע ידי כל כך אור ושפע, there wouldn't have been so much אור coming down, but the belt. He held it, you know, it's, it's not as much as the tzaddik. V'chein li adoi me'apagam sh'aisa tzaddik l'fi madregis ma'alas ma'kam achizas ha'shmasai. You can't compare a pagam that a tzaddik does. L'pagam sh'yasa echem nishara ha'am sh'madregose matam matam. You can't compare it. Those who can't compare different generations. We don't know. We don't know what the avoid of different generations are. And, and you know, this is what Chazal said ages ago, right? In Avos, that, you, that you, you know, you can't weigh havi zor b'mitzvah kala k'bachamura. You don't know. Nobody, we don't know. And therefore, we have to be careful with everything. We have to recognize. We also have to know that every one of us is incredibly unique and have an avoided to do. Even though there's tzaddikim, you can't rely on them. Chaim. Ah, chapter, uh, paragraph three. Oop, wrong way. And this is the last of the pieces from the Chesed Lavram, and then we'll talk about it together. Vizulas sibas madregas achizas aneshamas. Besides for the difference between different madregas that different people's neshamas have, yesh hev del rav ben maise ba'ale ha'chachma l'amar. There's a big difference between the incredibly, incredible chachamim and somebody who doesn't know. Ki ha'chacham betuv kav anosoy, ha'chacham with his heightened intellect, asher yichavin b'maylas ha'sulam, that he's able to have kavana in, in, the, in the levels of the sulam, through a person's kavana, he can step. A person who's practiced kavanas, a person who's practiced meditation, a person who's practiced controlling his mind, when he comes to Davana Shmaina Asrei, when he comes to Davana Shachras, and he goes stage after stage, he's controlling his mind, he's controlling his heart. You can't compare that to somebody who has no, no mind control. Think um, that he's that, that he becomes that he becomes a place that is prepared for the incredible shefa that's coming down. And from him he can bring down shefa for the whole world. Until a person can mamish become a a, a, a place that the Shekhinah is going be, to be misdabek in him. He is going to become Yisoyed, Shekhinah, which is an aspect of Malchus, and there's going to be a Yichud between Yisoyed and Malchus, and you will be that link. You will be that link between Kudshabrichu and Shekhinte. How? You are that Sinar. Mind-blowing. Ki Shefa ba Yodai, because the Shefa is coming through you, obviously it's not you, and, and the more that you think it's you, the more that you're not a Sinar, right? If you think it's you, then you cut the top of the Sinar off, and you say, I'm going to flow it. You're, we're nothing. That's a, a tzaddik. A tzaddik is only a greater, a great, only, the only reason why a tzaddik is on a higher level is because he has even more bittel ta kaddish baruch And he chaps that Hashem is even greater. But however, because achasha shefa ba yadai nimsa shehu makam atzina agadol, he becomes the place of the tzina. He is the channel. The makam tzaddik yisoid oilam. This is what we, we said before, is the concept of tzaddik yisoid oilam. He's the channel. Bulachain tidbak ba yashchina. And therefore the shchina is going to be misdabek with him. Mind blowing. And don't compare somebody who's, who's davening Shemani Esrei with Pasha Pshat to somebody who's davening Apisad. This is a very scary thing, but, but it's brought, the Zayar says it, so it's real. We, gotta, we have to figure out how to deal with it. Is that if you're not davening with proper Kavanas, you, we're not going to be zayfet to see the shechina. Ba'afilu shiyano, I said, even though we might have our tefillahs be answered, tiyah aniyah k'moy shemei shiv l'misha ayman acherev. It's like, yeah, 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 no problem. It's in the back of the store. He's like, you know, it's over there. Kyu b'hast upon him. Ba'yidei shliach mi b'chutz. It's a different level of relationship. U'lahavin tachlis ikra kavana kitzara chamechavin lahamshich aruchnis madregis alyonis ela oisius. What we have to do over here I don't think we're going to get into this much tonight, but the Baal Shem Tov does talk about it. I would like to enter into this 
um, I, I, the truth is I don't know enough. That's I'm as dumb as I don't know really much of what we're talking about Bachlal tonight. But this is just from what, from the little bit that I know I'm sharing with it, so you can also enjoy. I know it's, it's lit me up. But this idea of how we're going to understand the permutations of Isis, uh, you know, how they switch around, and being able to send the letters, those letters themselves from the tefillahs are not just words. That they're, they're, each one of them is mamish, becomes its own little angel, its own little the channel and they travel up the ladder, the, the, the ladder and they go lifnei Hashem and they present your situation, your story, what's going on. And, the, and that's how through the Shemus it, it is the Chiyas and it's, it's the DNA of the world. And so you, until you have these little letters, Shumazke, the letters that you, that you bring out. And this is how Mamish, the, the letters go all the way up. And this is why you have to be so careful with, with, with davening, to say it clearly, slowly enunciate the words, say them beautifully and nicely. And even if we don't know all the kavanas, but when you say them and you put it on, you know, I don't even know what I'm doing, but I know that I'm davening to Baruch with those letters, they go up, they go up. Beautiful, beautiful words. Mamish like pearls. Because a person is not just a bag of proteins and, and, and molecules. That mamish from this ruchnius, you're able to draw down incredible, incredible ruchnius from above and to above. You could you could um, send up your requests. And those letters that you create can go all the way up until mamish the 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 madrega that you're looking to get them to. This is how we get it all the way up there. So that way the, the letters, the words, they go all the way up to Shabbayim until they can create. And we can create new Tzirup Shemas and new Tzirupim and bring new energies down, new energies down into this world. All right, let's take a little bit of a pause. And uh, let's open this up. <clears throat> Hope you guys are still with me. Valt. Who a question? Yeah, yeah. Let's open the questions. <clears throat> um, what is it? Can you give an example of what it means uh be Machavan al Pisaif? What does that mean? How do we relate to that? So so I don't really know, what can I say, but Pasha is that when we're davening, there are different kavanas that we need to have. We need to have kavanas. It's not just kavanas of the pshat of the words. There's different shemas. There's different spheres that are connected to different shemas in, in davening. Um, different permutations of Hashem's name. Um, and as we're going through different parts of davening, or even any mitzvah, meaning when you're shaking lula, when you're making kiddush Friday night, when you're I'm um, reading from the Torah. The more that we're able, the more that we learn about it, and this is, we can learn, we can learn these farim, um, you know, specifically the different kavanas of how to make yichudim, etc. And, and we can be mechavent, let's say, you know, yud ke vav ke and alaf dal nun yud, how they connect, which tziru fishemus, which nikud, different nikudim are connected to different um, um, sphere. So you'll have a yud kevavke with this nikud for this bracha and shemayin asrei, and a different um, um, have shem avaya with a different nikud and a different bracha. Um, there's a lot involved in it. I, I wouldn't even know where to, where to start. But slowly you start learning. You can learn the kavanas, the kavanas of the arizal. To learn, I'm saying, but it, it goes. We have to first work on ourselves. It's, we have to work on shlav achar shlav. What we're talking about tonight, maybe we can just do, to bring it down. Wouldn't the first level be? The, the 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 meaning of the of the name of the shema of a Kodesh Baruch Hu in terms of of how a Kodesh Baruch Hu tells us they are like Adain a Kodesh Baruch Hu is Adain Hakol Hayah Hayvev Yihyeh and then Lekainu is Takif Bala Chaylois Bala Chayches Kulam Shemash Gech Bepratois Aleinu those those come to have every time that that one says any of those shema is to have in mind that that's who who we're talking about because somebody could say Hashem and not know what he, what's Hashem, who's Hashem, he doesn't know. But if Hashem is a Dain HaKal, and he's the one who's Hayah Hayah Vavihiyah, that's who, almost the definition of, of, of Hashem, and the person has that in mind, he's already made a giant leap forward in, in, in having, in being Mechavan. 
I think. Yeah, 100%. You commute me again. No, no, you, you commute yourself if you want. Um, but yeah, no, oh. Amish, I, 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 that, that's it. We mean that we have to begin to open up the, the, these kavanas. Mamish, like you just said, Abba, that was beautiful. Shkaya, thank you. And we slowly want to open up these, these meanings. To, just to be clear, the reason why we're talking about these things tonight is for a few reasons. One is to begin to open up what we can touch. We have to begin to see a little bit what we need to have she'ifot for, what we need to recognize, wow, there's more, there's more that I need to grow, there's more that I need to work on myself. But in terms of doing these yichudim or, or, or davening with these kavanas, the tzaddikim have told us, even though what we just said from, from you know, from, from the, from the uh, chesed lavram, we brought down from the Zaire that you should daven with the kavanas, it's very real. But many tzaddikim have told us, you don't need to go with that only for somebody who's already, if you've already learned it so well that it's mamish pashup shop for you, then you should be there. But we need to see what it means to be there. I, I would even say, you know, when we're talking about kavana, um, I, I always like to, to say like a pashat the mashal is that your connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu when you're davening is based on your kavana, meaning you create the highway that you're walking on. How strong is it? Well, your kavana is limited by how much you really believe that there is Hashem listening to you. If you don't believe that Hashem is really listening to you, so then gavalt, you're not really, there's no real bridge that's connecting you. There's no highway, there's no tsinar. The first step is pasha dalif name miyat aymed, meaning, or you can get into, you know, the, the parish of milims. Like, maybe, like, and as soon as I, I don't know, but, but the first step, is, like you said, is who is Hashem? What is, when I say Havaya, what does that mean? When I say Elekeinu, what does that mean? When I say Aleph Dalad Nunyud, what does that mean? When I say, um, when I say, when I, when I, when I say Baruch, Ata, Hashem, what am I thinking about? What does it mean that I'm standing in front of a Kutcher Bruchu? And, and we want to open up these channels. We want to open up this, this world to begin to see the realities of what it is and know that it's Lafi us. It's not just that Hashem, like, you know, we're kind of pushing a button, we'll, bounce, you know, knock out a mincha or not, you know, and it's like, okay, we just did it. No, Gabbat, like you're, you're doing it. How real is it? Well, it, the, your mincha is, is as real as you make it. If it's real, it's real. If it's not, it's not. Any other, th I, I'm, I'm, I'm open to, to Ezra just share with us. Have any other thoughts, questions, ideas? Okay, I guess we're going to continue. So I'm going to jump into the next piece I'd like to do. I'm just trying to see. We have a Svasemis over here. Again. Why is it going slow? Okay. I'm typing this as Fasemis. Okay. Um, oops. Okay. We're going to jump in. What's going on over here? Okay. This is a very, very interesting Sfas Emes. And just debating how much more time we have here. Let's we'll see how much more I have that I wanted to get through tonight. Not bad. We're like a, a little more than halfway. That's good. Um, okay, so let's, let's open up this Sfas Emes. This is a pretty wild piece. This is also going to talk about this idea of the tzaddik, and this is going to help us also understand um, a little bit more of keeping keeping in the state of being the tzinar and the flow. Meaning, understanding what it means to be the tzinar is that not that I am the one that's making anything happen. So both from the level of me actually causing anything, it's I'm really it's not in my hands. I understand. Have, we have to appreciate as adam as tzaddik, we have to understand that everything that Hashem does, it's complete complete bittel, right? It's you know tzaddik bemunasa. It's like mamish like. On one level, it's that we're mavato all of our beliefs, all of our ideas that I can't, that can do anything, and it's mamish all ruts in Hashem. It's complete trusting and relying on Hashem. 
mitzad echad, right? Mitzad sheni, we become the, the, the one, right? It says that Yosef was the one who got to the place where he was able to say that everything was from Hashem. He looked at his brothers and they were like, oh, we feel bad. And he was, they, he was like, what are you talking about? It was all from Hashem. Everything's from Hashem. But the one, the tzaddik, was able to recognize that I'm the, the, the source of everything is not me. It's all HaKadosh Baruch He can then come to the level where Yosef, who a mashbir, l'chol Eretz Mitzrayim, he becomes the mashbir because he becomes the one who's giving sustenance to all Am Yisrael, more to all Mitzrayim, because he is, because he, he, cause he is now the one who's controlling the flow. He's the one who's controlling the funnel. And that's the kayak of tzaddik. Somebody there want to say something? <clears throat> so if not, please put yourself on mute. Go ahead. Um, so, so let's jump into this. So this piece is going to get into this idea of how the tzaddik stays in the flow state and not doesn't become stopped up on either end, either think either wanting the flow for himself or wanting it for something else. Okay, let's see. Barashi. in and Sefer Barashi, a hefresh bein divrei esav sh'amar yeshli rav Yaakov amar kol mashinitzrachli. Right, so Esav says, "I have so much, <clears throat> I have more than I need," and Yaakov says, "I have everything that I need. Kol mashinitzrachli, everything that I need, I have. I don't need your presence." And Esav says, "What do you mean? But look, I have, I have such a harchav. I have more than I need." Says the Baal Shem Tov, "Af ki vaday amar Esav emes." For sure, Esav saying the emes. He has way more than he possibly needs. The way Hashem gives the good shefa, the flow, to the tzaddik is in a hidden way. How great is the good that you have hidden away for those that fear you. In general, the, those that fear you, right, it means that you've hidden away for them. But what he's saying over here, is that shall it tzaddik be yorei Hashem for for somebody who's a tzaddik and somebody who has yira yira Hashem noise na toiva derech matzpun Hashem gives the good to the tzaddik in a hidden way sheyia loy rak hanitzrachle that the tzaddik is sustained with just what he needs once again re, um, remnants of uh, um, it, it reminds us of the of the words of the chanina beni daile bekav charuv mishabas l'shabas. Like it says in the pasuk, "Ein machzor li reyav," that there's no lack for those that fear Hashem. However, the tzaddik won't have anything extra either. And through this, the tayva stays with the tzaddik, meaning it's not there for a short period of time. It's a nitzchias, the height of netzach. It's it's a it's a netzach. It's forever. It will stay with the tzaddik. Pirish, Magbia Shvalim, the Hashem raises up Shvalim, those that are low. So the, the Holy Simcha Bunim of Shishka explains, Shashem is Barach Magbia Ha Adam, that when Hashem raises an Adam, the Oifin Shehi and Nishar Shafal Kamay Shahaya, he raises the Tzaddik up in a way that the Tzaddik won't become a Baal Gaiva. Hashem is Barach Nais and Taiv Lakala Nitzrach. Hashem gives good to all those that need. I'm not sure if you catching on the whole thing, but we're going to go through it and you'll see how it all begins to click together and we'll speak it out. If a person's a Baal Gaiva, it comes out that he's not lacking anything. Right? He says, I don't need anything. And if he's not in a state of somewhat chaser, suddenly the flow he stops the flow from above. A tzaddik who is in constant in a state of somewhat chaser, meaning I have what I need for this moment, but I, Hashem, I need the upcoming moment. I need you to give me what I need to meet the next moment. Only somebody who has that bit where he has to be open to Hashem, he's able to be a, a vessel to be makabal, the bracha of Hashem. Like we know, the water flows, the shefa flows to a low place. So let's explain this for a second before we go in more is that that the Rebbe Chabun Shishka says that Hashem raises up the lowly and he takes down the haughty. Somebody who's a Baal Gaiva, somebody who becomes haughty with it, he says, look, I have everything, so Hashem's going to take him down. But Hashem, when he raises up the, the Shafal, he raises up the, the simple, the low person, 
he doesn't want that low person to become a new Baal Gaiva. So he raises the tzaddik up in a way that he says, let's go slow. Instead of me giving you more than you need, where then you'll become a Baal Gaiva and you're going to cut off from the Shafa, let me give you just what you need for this moment. And that way our relationship will stay open and we'll constantly be in contact. We'll constantly be talking. We'll be talking all day long. If, if somebody doesn't, if somebody has to give somebody who he doesn't like, it's like, here, take your, you know, how much do you need? Okay, this, it, let's make it cover for the next two years. I don't want to have to see your ugly face, you know? Take this and, and go run. But Hashem says, I want to be in constant contact with the tzaddik. And this is wild and painful. And it's a little bit hard to hear. But, but, but the Noem Ali Melech davened that all of his offspring should not have money. Because he, he knew that if they were poor, they'd be close to that Kaddish Baruch Hu. And it's painful. Like you think about it, you're like, what? Like, what about, what about the idea of having, of, of having, having and being able to, to, you know, do it from a place of, you know, Rebbe, Rebbe Huda Nasi. We see Rebbe Huda Nasi, he says, I didn't even, I wasn't even Nana with a pinky. So there's, there's a, an aspect of being real and being open and the way to stay open, the way to stay hungry as in a, in a, in a Vayda Sashem is to recognize I'm never there yet. Rabbi Nachman said he came to this world to show those that are in a low place how close he is to them and those that are in a high place about how much more they need to go. You got to stay hungry. <clears throat> you got to stay hungry. So let's go. Let's go a little deeper. So now we're going to take this whole thing on, to the next level. Hashem doesn't want that the tzaddik should turn to him and say, Hashem, you owe me. Right? If, Hashem, if, if a tzaddik goes, Hashem, you owe me. Look, look how good I've been doing. Why? That on the first level is that if I, if I ask Hashem, say, Hashem, look, I, did, I just kept Shabbos. So why don't you give me, you know, uh, you know, a thousand dollars? Hashem's like, I don't want to give it to you because of you kept Shabbos. Like, I, let Shabbos be be an infinite reward of Shabbos, and I don't want to give you things for that. And even more than that, what kind of a relationship would it be with Hashem if every time that I did something, I'd be asking something for it? Imagine what would a relationship between a husband and wife be if every time that like you wanted something, you had to do something for it, like. Please, I, that's not what it's about. I'm doing it because I love you. I'm doing it, I, you know, it's like we said before, you, we should serve Hashem Shalei Manasik Abel Pras, just to be connected to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, just to do it. Ubevada Yoyser Kavad LaShem Yisbarach, for sure it's a greater covet for Hashem, Lemisha Kol Masav Eim Bavur Kvoyde, Leilig Armayu Klau, for sure it's a greater covet for Hashem if you have somebody who's doing it, Lishma, than doing it to get, to get a little payment. Lachain Isa, Therefore, when Yaakov Vinu Davin, and he said, Hashem, I need something, he Davin not in his chus. He didn't ask. He said, Hashem, just give it to me just because you love me. And so too, from Hashem's side, Hashem says, good. You don't want me to give it to you because, because I owe you? Good. I want to give it to you because I just want to give it to you. Just like your Ratzin of the Tzadik. And and once again, we see here the rutsin of the tzaddik is going to be the way that Hashem is going to give it to him. So you see that in truth, <coughs> the good that a person that tzaddik's getting is not from his own efforts. And therefore, the tzaddik needs to say, "Look at all." When when the tzaddik looks at what he's getting from Hashem, he has to look at it and say, "I don't deserve any of it." Maybe Taka, I could be in a relationship with Hashem where he would give me what he owes me, but that's not what our relationship is. Our relationship is that Hashem gives me and I don't deserve it. And therefore, you have to stay Shafal because anything that you actually have is Mamish, not because you deserve it. Avol HaRasha, what the Rasha, the Ace of Mashinais and Hashem is Barach, what Hashem gives him, who be'emes mitzad ma'at masav. It's be'emes because he only does a, a couple of deeds. And because of those deeds, Hashem says, here, let me pay you off. Like we know that Hashem says, he pays off those that hate him. He says, here, take the money and And this is why Esav is misguided, because he says, look, everything that I'm holding in my hand, I deserve. I deserve all of this. Look at it. This is my malchus and I'm owed it. Hashem gave it to me. And the tzaddik looks at him and says, Taka, you're right. And you know something? The way that he, Hashem gives it to the Russia will, lets him be a Balgaiva and lets him, you know, begin the, 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 the slope down because Hashem says, I don't want you. So go be a Balgaiva, take what, you, what, 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 you, what is coming to you and 
Begun. This is what it means that the Rav is Yavod. Okay, I'm not sure what he means over here. Right? What does what does Hashem want from you? Kim liyira, and we say what's altikre ma ella mea pirish mea brachas. Hashem doesn't doesn't want. He just wants you to give him the brachas pirish a kol davar shemakabel adam tzarech leidah shurak me Hashem is brach. Everything that the person is makabel, he should know it's just from Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Vanach nu ma, and we need to be in a state of ma where we're not deserving. What are we? We're not. It's not. We're not doing it for a reward. We're not giving it to Hashem for a reward. We're just, we're just doing it. And we're in a state of just being where we are. And we don't deserve what we're getting. Says this is what, when we say is that the Rav Tuvcha that Hashem gives to the Tzadik is in a state of Ma. The state of Ma is where I'm not, I'm not, I'm not becoming anything. I'm not be, saying, there's no Yeshus here. There's no saying, I am this now. I have now something. I'm just in a state of being, of just anach numa. What am I? I'm nothing. I don't. Oh, I, I don't deserve what I'm getting. It's all a gift and givalt. I'm just being mekabel from Hakadosh Baruch Hu. But how do we get to the state? Ayideish it's a fanta That through this safanta lariyacha, through this way that Hashem is relating to the tzaddik, that He's giving to him in a way which is only what he needs. Therefore, the tzaddik can be an open channel. And as we now to connect it to what we were saying before is that when the tzaddik is able to be in this state of ma, this state of bittal, the state of I'm nothing, and it's not about me, I'm just a channel. So you're right, he is only sustained, and the tzaddik is sustained with a very, very little bit. What, does Hash, what, what is he? He's a completely open channel. He's an open channel that his bittal has created himself, that he's open wide on top, and he's a funnel straight down to the shechina, and his mamish can channel down for the entire world. And Mamish, the whole world is flowing through him, but he is nothing. And this is Maisha Rabbeinu, who's able to be, he is the Av, and he Mamish becomes this channel that we can all receive from. We're all receiving Nevuah through this incredible channel because he was on the greatest state of Ma. He was on the greatest state of Bittal. And this is what Tzadikim are. Tzadikim are this constant flow. And so on, on the level of, first of all, I'm connecting simply bringing down Shefa for the world, bringing down health, bringing down goodness, the tzaddik is able to bring this down to the entire world. And on a higher level, is the tzaddik is able to connect you to these concepts, meaning to what, what to, to the concept of recognizing a greater state of bittal da'kadosh baruch Hu, a greater state of ma, a greater state of openness, openness and allowing Hashem to flow into this world. How we doing, Chavra? Doing great. Yeah, we'll jump straight into the next thing. Any any thoughts, questions you want to add? The, 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 the quote for Rav Yavad has to do with when Hashem is telling Rivka she'll have two nations. Right. I just didn't understand the reference um, and what this Fasemis was trying to teach with that. We can go back to that if you want. But yeah, you're 100% correct. All right, I guess we'll move on. So to no other thoughts. Quiet crowd, all right. That's okay. That's what it is. Accept what it is. I, 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 I have a thought on what it might mean. Okay, I'm gonna, I'll flip back to it and you can uh, share. For Rav, the one who, who has a Rav, Yahweh, it will work. Ah, I mean, he's in a state of being an Eved. Shkayach. Yeah, that's Pshat. Nice. Huh. Beautiful. Mom is beautiful. Okay, for some reason, the arrows don't work right away when I jump on this. I don't know what's going on here. Okay. So it didn't go back, but it probably will flip back in a second as soon as we start. So these, these next two, there we go. Just flip. No, that's not what I want. Okay, now, why is it? No, here, okay, we're going to go with this. Um, these two pieces, very short, in the midst of just pick them out. The truth is that this concept is really all over the place. We'll jump into these two. 
because it's clear, but this is the idea that your rutzen creates a tzinar. Um, we mentioned the idea that your kavanas, your 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 the, your your intention can create a, a, the the sulam that's mutzavarat zareish megiel shemaima that creates the tzinar, but it's created from the, your deepest rutzen. What do I really want? I really want it. I really want a relationship with Hashem. I really want to be one with Hashem. I really want to see Hashem in my life. Gevald, that rutzen creates the tzinar. And it's how much rutzen we put into it. If you put a lot of rutzen into your Shemayin Esther, Gevald, that creates the tzinar. So that's what we're going to open up over here, that concept. <clears throat> From the Taldus Yaakov Yosef. of Matzah Isha. Somebody worked hard and he found the woman. Shetarach v'yoga u Matzah. He worked. And he toiled, and he found. Then he mamish, he becomes a vessel for the hashra sashchina. Shnikra isha yiras Hashem. Matzatoyiv be'ene elikim ve'adam, and he finds favor in the eyes of Hashem and Adam. Ki ruach abrias neicha emenu, achas ruach hamokam neicha emenu. V'zeh shekasav a yafek rotzin me'ashem shu'maitzi mamshich shefer rotzin the kol ha'elam. I think I might have put the wrong piece in here. I mean, this is it, but it's not. Kihu nasat sinar oisius ratza and the chol bnei dari begam nikra zachar yisaid oisius nights as nikra type. Okay, I think I I I want meant in another piece. He does mention this over here as well, but this is the idea that he brings down the shefa of ratza into the whole world, and we create that which creates the sinar. Um, by sinar's oisius ratza, and that he's able to bring the sinar for the whole world, and this is also called zachar, which is midas yisaid. Um, which is Shinikra Taib Shu Yasai Chalim Madragas Nikola Madragas Takar. Okay. Let, let's leave that. I, I apologize. That wasn't uh, the piece I intended, I don't think. Here from the Tfer Shlaima. Let's see if this one I got right. Ray Anaisin and Anaichi Naisin Lafnecha Mayoim. Naktamasha Kasa Bi Gamara Talmud Chacha Marbim Shalom Bailam. It says in the Gamara that Tamidi Chachaman bring increased shalom in the world. What's Shalom? Shalom who meet us at Yisoyed. Kamei Shekosov, Mesim Shalom Babayis. Hainu HaTalmud Chacham Marbim Hashpoyis Taibis Yisrael. That's HaTalmud Chacham increases incredible Hashpoyis for the for all the Jews. Kamei Shekosov, Mokam Acher, Moishe Begimachi Ratzayin, which is Oisei Yisinar. Kimach Ma Shleimus HaRatzayin Lavad Hashem Yisparach, Hayi Be'echolta, Lohayrit HaShef Lebni Yisrael. That through the Shleimus of your Ratzayin, which is which is what we said is the connection between Yisoyed and Ratzon, which is the Bechina of Kesar. You could bring down the Shefa to the world. Okay, the Seder. It wasn't that, uh, it was unnecessary. I mean, for what we're going for. Mamish beautiful Claris, but uh, you can leave it. What I want to begin to move into now, just to, to, to open up this point, is this idea that we mentioned before, which is that the Adam is the Sula Mutz of Arza. So we'll just look at the beginning. We have Shem Tov Yeshba Adam Eshes Firas, Ki Oilam Katan, Atzadik is an Oilam Katan, Ki Mashi Yeshba Oilam Ugam Kain B'Shanu B'Nefesh Adam, B'Siman, Bahar Sinai, Oshan Kulai. Bahar Sinai was, was Oshan, Oshan is Oilam Shana Nefesh. I could have brought, I brought this in the Kesha Shem Tov, you can bring it from the morale all over the place. You can bring it from anywhere. But this is the, the idea of Adam is an Eilam Kata. So but what do I want to open up from this? We, we, know, we know that a, a person, or what, we're, what we're, we've been teaching over here, we're trying to, we're sharing and we're learning over here, is this idea that we become the Tzinar for, this whole, for the whole world. Now, as we're becoming the Tzinar, we're davening, we're rising these levels, and we're bringing this flow into the world. And, and the way that we bring this flow into the world is by becoming the tzinar. But there's a little bit, there's more to it that we need to, we need to talk about. Two inyanim, let's say, that we can spotlight that we need to talk about. Nakuda one is, isn't the world reality already a certain way? So how do I affect that reality? How do I change the perceptions of the world? Or how do I change the physical reality of the world if it's already that way? How do my perceptions change it? And don't I have to accept that the world is the way it is now? 
meaning I could, can I just come in and change it? Like if I just perceive that I can fly, I can't really just start flying. Like don't I have to accept that certain things are not, I'm not able to change or I can't affect? That's one. And the second thing that we want to talk about, which we mentioned, how a person can expand the level that he can become, like his perceptions can become his side for the whole world, like foundational perceptions, like Rabbi Hanina Ben Daisa's perceptions were able to affect a random girl because in his world, if he perceived it, it wouldn't happen. So we have to ask ourselves two questions. One, if, he would, if they wouldn't have come to Rabbi Hanina Ben Daisa, would she have, would she have died? Is it only because Rabbi Hanina Ben Daisa was consciously aware of the story and therefore his perceptions affected it? What about if he didn't know about the story? And two is, meaning, how far does that go? Meaning, how, how can he actually affect realities? How much can, can we control and affect these realities? Aren't they already, so to speak, running? And how can I affect, how can my perception, let's say over here, if I'm sitting on my porch, how can it affect something on the other side of the world? How can a perception affect that? So to begin to open up some of these ideas, um, I would like to start with a hypothesis. And this hypothesis is that when we want to create a certain reality, we need to create an alignment between Machshava, Dibur, and Maisa. So I can, I can bring something into this world. I can bring a reality into this world. But, I'm, but, but it's, if, I'm, if I'm doing it in the world of Machshava, it, it might not necessarily be Mishtal Shal down into the Eilam Adibur. And if I do something in the Eilam Adibur, it might not be Mishtal Shal down to the Eilam Amaisa. So how do I make an alignment between this? So, this is, so in Yiddishkeit, we know that that's what we need to do when you're doing any mitzvah, you're doing any action. You need to have an alignment between machshava, dibor, and maisa, which also kind of corresponds to oilam, shana, and nefesh. So, <clears throat> so how do we do this? How, how would a person do this? So first of all, we see it in, by the Nevi'im, when they were giving nevuah, many times their nevuah, they, they tried to encompass their nevuah in a physical reality. So for example, they'd be having a concept, Shmuel is telling, Shaul, you're losing the kingdom. And Shmuel does a, does a dramatic turn and his cloak snags on the crag of the rock and it rips off and he says, just as the corner of my cloak gets ripped off by the, by the, the outcropping of the rock, so too will your malucha be torn from you and not be given to your children. And we see this. We see these type of ideas where they kind of take a, a, a spiritual concept and it's manifest in the physical reality. Um, people have also made this comment, you know, they say that sometimes you see when things were coming into the world, maybe people were, you know, novels were coming out about it before, you know, before the whole Corona thing, how many stories were there, movies and, and ideas that would begin to be promulgated in the world that were, you know, that kind of maybe didn't make it happen or was it, did it when it was coming out, did it just, ha did it come out before because like the energy was so to speak in the world before, um, We've even seen throughout history, it, it, you know, we can even document, and in the world of Tyra, it's pretty cool to see that, that, that even Sadiqim that were in different parts of the world began to talk in similar fashion. So, for example, you, you know, the, I mean, I think probably the best, most open example is you see like um, the Shulchan Aruch, Rabbi Yosef Karo and Ramosha Isserlish are in two different places, and they both have this idea to codify and make a Shulchan Aruch. And so they end up putting them together. But we see it even with Rishonim. You see even like, like different Rishonim will have a similar idea. And if we look geographically, we're not really sure if they, did they, did they talk to each other? Did they both share this idea? Did they send letters to each other? Or do they both have a similar idea? There's a story that, 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 that we can maybe um, make this a little more tangible. The Baal Shem Tev, the story with the Baal Shem Tev, that this Yidla, you know, he's Bamash was Talmud Chacham, and he heard about the Baal Shem Tov. He's like, should I go? Should I go meet him? I don't know. Finally, he comes to the Baal Shem Tov, and he sees there sitting in the little steeple of the Baal Shem Tov are two simple Jews. You know, they're working part of the day, and now they're sitting learning. And lo and behold, they're learning the sugya in Ksubis that this guy was just learning. Not only is they're learning the sugya, they're just getting up to the Taisvis, 
that for the last two weeks, he was struggling on this Taisvis. And this guy that he's now by the Baal Shem and he sees these two simple guys learning a Taisvis. And he's like, it took me two weeks to figure out this Taisvis. And I finally had Pshat. Givalt, when he had Pshat, it was lichtig. It was so beautiful. Let's see what these guys are going to say Pshat. And so one guy, you know, is reading and he says, no, Taisvis has a kasha. Taisvis answers. Another guy goes, hmm, what's Taisvis' answer? And the first guy goes, oh, maybe it's this and this and this. And the guy is standing there in line waiting to go meet the Baal Shem Tov, and he's blown away. This guy, Kilachar Yad, just came up with a pshat that it took him two weeks to get to this understanding of what Taisus' answer was. He comes into the Baal Shem Tov, he says, I have no questions for you. So Baal Shem Tov says, what? He says, I- I'm blown away. If the, if the simple people in, in your shtibel can understand the Taisus, so push it, I know that you must be a great man and, and that these are great, great people. So the Baal Shem Tov says, I don't think that should be the reason that you should become my Talmud. I'll, let me explain that to you. It's not so difficult. He said, sometimes there are ideas that come down into the world. And what, how do they come into the world? It's like, it's like a library, an old dusty library. And sometimes a guy goes and he crawls up into the back corners of the library, like almost the top shelf, books behind books, and he pulls a book down, looks at it, he goes, oh, this is interesting. He brings it down, he reads it, and he puts it down on the table. Now, everybody else who walks in, they say, oh, look at this book, and they start leafing through it. And they said, now it's accessible to everybody. He said, your Pshad and Taisvis that you worked on, you brought down from a high place, but now it's accessible to everybody. And, you know, sometimes we think that we have ideas, or sometimes maybe those ideas are having us. Maybe those ideas come into this world, and they enter into my mind and your mind. We see many times people have similar ideas at similar times. It's even brought down that when you have a new chiddush, don't jump to share it right away. Let it, you know, let it, let it, let it stew a little bit in there. And then when it's ready, share it. But it's got to, it's got to fully mature. It's got to fully <clears throat> marinate. So it comes out. So you birth it in a healthy way. So when we're bringing these, these, re- these, you know, I guess when you're bringing something from the world of infinity into the world of possibility and from the world of possibility into the world of probability and then from the world of probability into the world of actuality, there's a hishtalshalus. The more that we can make a, an alignment with the hishtalshalus, the more it could happen. And along with this hypothesis, I think that we can say is that maybe this is what the tzaddikim are doing. You know, I know somebody who went into a tzaddik and he wanted to have kids. And so the tzaddik took a little chickpea and he said, here, make a bracha on the chickpea. And, you know, and so the chickpea went inside him and he made an alignment between the, the mind of the tzaddik and the physical properties of the chickpea. And now the guy ate the chickpea and he had a kid. You know, that little chickpea turned into a kid. So how did that little chickpea turn into a kid? So I think that it's, it's that we want to create the physical realities. Even sometimes the tzaddik might lay things out in a physical format in front of him, and that will become the physical representation of a spiritual idea that he's trying to create in his mind. This is the idea of kavanas, you know, as I'm going into the mikvah, I'm going into the oisius mikvah. I'm going into the shame of the mikvah. I'm, I'm, and we, 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 we are, this is like, I guess, the beginning of making yichudim is we create an alignment between these ideas. I'm taking out the garbage from my house. I can be mechaven that I'm taking out the garbage. I'm, I'm cleaning out the tumas. And as I throw the garbage bag into the garbage can, I'm, a, I'm having kavana that I want to get rid of all my negativity, all of my bad things. And we can create an alignment between the machshava and the dibor and the maisa. Um, and, and so this is what I believe is happening with the tzaddikim. But there's one more step, meaning it's nice for the tzaddik to do it right there. How would he affect something that's far away from him? So I would like to say that maybe the way that the tzaddik can affect something that's far away from him is because Adam is taka and oilam kata, like we just said. And, and because he's in oilam kata, and Hashem actually makes that all the realities of the world will happen within his life, within his story. Maybe, and this is what we're going to see right now from, from Rabbi Nachman and Sikha Saran, that sometimes things that happen all around the world will happen within your own life. Right now we're all in quarantine and maybe some of us are coming out and whatever it might be, but we're all having an, an experience. Within your own experience, you can experience what's happening between two world empires. Maybe it's between a fight between a husband and a wife. 
And so they need to make a, a, a shalom. Maybe if they make shalom between them, or maybe it's between neighbors. But Hashem created this, that each one of us are going to have rhythmic or concentric circles, so to speak. So there's Yehuda in his own mind, and Yehuda with his friends, and Yehuda with the whole world, and the world that's happening in a way that if you save one person, you can mama save the whole world. Maybe your actions that are happening right there, if you have the proper kavana, you can actually affect the entire world. But it has to be, there has to be an alignment made between what's happening by you and what's happening by the world. So let's open this up, see the, the, the Rebbe Nachman inside, and, 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 and explore it together. Sikha Saran 77. Everything is Mamish one. That the Machlaikis that happens between one man and his own family, the Kayoitse, Kanal, who Gam Kain Mamish, Amachlaikis, Shabena, Malach, and Baumet. It's Mamish, the same thing that's happening between different governments. Kikol Echa Man Shabesa, Ubechinas, Uma Miyuchadas, famous Garan Zamzek, Mashesh, and Mohammed's Bena Umas. That mamish that each person in the family is its own thing. Like you think sometimes you turn to the kids and you go, it's World War Three. Itaka is. It actually is what's going on. Who who? You sometimes you can even recognize which nature, which character a person is portraying. Kiadua Midas Umas, it's known the different midas of the world. Shizek Kasa and Veritzeach the Kayoitse. At this one, this, this, this nation is more angry and this one's more murderous. So you can find it in the individuals in your house. Even if somebody doesn't really want to fight. And sometimes he wants to just sit and chill. Sometimes he doesn't have a choice. You are stuck in it because... We, you, you're, you are not just you. The whole world is totally in you, and therefore your actions can affect it. Maybe sometimes there's a nation who's just, I just want to chill in my room. No, Adaraba. He gets involved. And he's, even though he's trying to say, listen, take it, be, you know, he's being very submissive. Even so, they drag it right into the world. Each different countries that are arguing, they say, no, you have to be on my side. And the whole world is in him. Rabbi Nachman says sometimes if a person is completely by himself, he can actually end up having to play the different things out within him, within himself, and therefore he's mamish going to have to. And sometimes it can make a person crazy, make can make a person schizo, because he's dealing with these multiple things inside of him. And the truth is that on many levels, this is a lot of what we're doing. The healing that each one of us is doing, and this is really a very very deep avoda to understand. This is what we spoke about in in the shir davening for tikkun is that we that we need to really understand that all the tefillahs that we're doing and all the work that we're doing is not just us as individuals. We're mamish doing this for the whole world. And sometimes if you're dealing with your own trauma and your own challenges, you have to mamish know that if you do the work, you're helping your friend. And if your friend does the work, he's helping you. And if we work together, and if you have kavana that you're working together, it'll help even more because the machshava and the kavana's help. And the more that we work together and the more that you have kavana that you want the whole world to be affected by it, the more it works. This is like what we said from the Chesed Lavram. And because Hashem in His ultimate kindness made these concentric circles work this way, so therefore the tzaddik can actually be piled by sitting in his own room and working on his own midas, or maybe you and I, by working on our own challenges between ourselves and our spouses and being better parents and being better friends and working on our midas actually are affecting the whole world. You're not an individual. You're just one piece of a giant thing. And we know that in the holographic principle, it's not that one piece is just one, pe one piece of a greater thing. Each piece has all of it within it. Maybe we'll Google holographic <laughs> after this, and you'll mama see what I'm talking about. But the, in the, in the idea of the holographic principle is that 
the, 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 every piece is nichla on everything. Meaning in every in infinity, even this this tiniest bit of infinity has infinity in it. And that's really what we're talking about over here. Let's see if we can get this to go forward. <coughs> Thoughts, ideas, questions, Chavra. I don't know. I can't even see if anybody else is here. Oh, there are some people here still. I don't know. Okay. Uh, technical difficulties. Can we take a bio break? Take a what break? Biology. Okay, we're going to jump now into the next piece. The vault. It's a marathon tonight. Warned ya. Amru alav al Rabchanina ben Daisa. Shai mespal al choylem var merzeh chay bezeh mes. The Rabchanina Mishnah says in Brachas that Rabchanina would daven and say, "On this one, this one's going to live. This one's going to die." Amru le minayin ati yade. How do you know? Amru le im shgurat filosofi. If the words flow and if it's smooth and if it comes out clear, yade ani shu mekubel. Dem lav yade ani shu metora. And if then if if it comes out smooth, I know the tefila was accepted. If not. I see that it was messed up. And so once again, we see over here that there's an it needs to be an alignment between Machshava and Dibor and Maisa. And, and the truth is, is that in, uh, I think, Chavtes, in, in um, the Magad of Arvliaka from the Mezra Chamagad, I believe, somewhere right over there, maybe in the 30s, um, he talks about this idea that when you have an alignment of, ma, of the Oilam HaMachshav with the Oilam dibor, for sure the Oilam HaMaisa will come out. And that's what Rabbi Hanin Ben Daisa was saying over here, is that if you have an alignment of Oilam HaMachshav and it comes out smoothly into the Oilam dibor, I know that the alignment means it's already going to come out into the Oilam HaMaisa. And so here we see this alignment of these different worlds. Okay, and we're going to move, I'm going to try to move a little faster just to get through the rest of the things that we have here. <clears throat> Actually, we're done. This is it. We're, gonna, we're going right into this last piece. Well, really two more pieces, but we'll do this one. This is the Joshua Saran connecting us to the holy, holy tzaddikim. Mind-blowing piece. This is the Joshua Saran and Joshchas. Venerally oid, says the holy, holy Ran. Himovar ishtatif anavi manavi. This is the middle of a drasha. Highly recommend this drasha to learn in the Joshua Saran number eight. It says, besides for the fact that there's a connection between the Nevi'im, Vachacham and Machacham, Betayeles, Kibul, Achacham, Akamesh, Pirashnu. We explained over there that, that, uh, that when, uh, when one Navi is with another Navi, it helps the flow of Nevua. When one Chacham is with another Chacham, it's not just that he learns information, but it helps for the flow of wisdom. There's a shared consciousness. There's a, a shared attraction, so to speak, between these different um, energies, these different people. But yesh b'zein yinacher. There's another thing. Who she'ain suffik she'roi she'namin she. There's no suffik, says the says the holy Ran. That it's fitting to believe she k'moi she b'zman she beis amigdash kaim. That just like when the times when the beis amigdash was around, haya hamaon hahu hamakudish makoim muchan lachol shefa hanavua va'achachma. We know that that was a space. It was a zone. It was a, a an area. To get into a, um, to to be open to receive prophecy and wisdom, that through the means just of that space of the world, there would be energy that would flow down on all the Jews just by having the Beis Hamikdash al Mekaymai. You wherever you were, you were a different human being. Listen to this. So to Nevi'im and wise men, they are, because they are a, an, an attractor, they're like a magnet for prophecy and for wisdom. That they can become a beacon for Shefa, even for other people in their generation, even if they're not with them. They're just, they become beacons for wisdom. You hang out next to a Navi, you get Nevi'im, even if you're not with him, just him being in your generation. Avol mitzad himatzah bedarim, the fact that they exist in your generation. 
Shehem Atzmam Kemai HaMikdash HaMikudosh Tzadikim are mamish like the holy base of Mikdash. V'aramban Zal Kasev V'saif Seder V'haya Ekev The Ramban says in the end of Ekev V'yitachin Ba'anshe Zeus HaMala And it's, it, it's, it makes sense that for these elevated individuals Shetiyah Nafsham Gam Bechayeyem Tzrura B'tzara Chayim that their nefesh, their, their, their souls, even in their life, they're connected to existence. They themselves are a, are, I don't have a good word for ma'on, anybody wants the yellow one out. A ma'on for the shechina, they are like a, a magnet, they are a space, they are a, a yeah, they're, they're a place. They are just a, yeah, a home, they're, a, they're, they're like a, I don't know, a, a, a zone, a, a, a magnet, we said these words. A beacon. A beacon. L'shechina. Kasher Ramzu Baal Sefer Kuzari. Like it says, V'efshe Sheniskavin Gam Lo. L'fikach B'imotzi L'chachamim V'chasidim B'doyrois Yiye HaShefa Shepeh Aleim. Therefore, for Chachamim, and for Hasidim that are in the different generations, this is pre-Hasidic um, times, but Hasidim, um, it, it's fitting that there's a Shefa that comes down on them, Usam, and with them as being that beacon, that sinar, Efshir Shia Shefeya Al Kol Hamukhanim Ibn Daram. That that Shefa can begin to shine down on anybody who makes themselves available to receive this energy. And for sure, for those people that are connected to the tzaddikim. And here's where it gets crazy. And not just when they're alive, even after they are dead. The places of their, of, of their burial place, the place where their body is interred. You can you can experience an experience. It's not the same as them being alive, maybe or maybe even more. Point to some, just, we'll see different things. But uh, but just but just them being there, they become a beacon. You go to uh, the caver of a tzaddik, and you can connect to the energy that he brought down. Remember, we said each tzaddik is a different energy. Each tzaddik is, has their own gezera, their own carving their own sinar. You go to a different tzaddikim, you can experience different energies. But it says, like we said before, you have to be muhan. You have to open yourself up a little bit. Ki atzmai seyem. Because their bones, asher kvar hayu, kalem lachol aleim ashefa aloiki. Because they were already vessels in their life to be a sinar and a, for, for the shefa of elakus, a dayin nishar bahem in amala, they still have that energy, therefore it's worth it to go visit Kivrei Tzadikim, because in such a place will be more appeasing to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, because there is the presence of physical bodies that have the, are there. And so this is what we're doing tonight, this is why we're here, learning this Torah, sharing these ideas, both to connect to, to, to HaKadosh Baruch Hu through these words, but also to connect to the tzaddikim that said the words. And, and, and the Baal Shem Tev is a wild Torah. We'll have to do it another time, but we're going to do it as a, maybe we'll do it one night, maybe next week or something. All about how every bit of Torah that's, re, that's revealed is mamish, a piece of Hashem, and that not that we, we are now something different. This is all just elikus being revealed. Every tzaddik that comes down, what he's revealing is that little bit of elikus. And no two tzaddikim, no two yidin are the same. But we have to open up to be makabal from them, to be makabal from these different beacons, to drink from the incredible wealth of these different tzaddikim. And what is their wealth? Their wealth is one thing and one thing only. It's Hashem. It's Chaya Chayim. It's the energy of a Kaddish Baruch Hu, but how does it come down? Each tzaddik creates his own unique channel. Each tzaddik creates his own unique zone, his own unique energy, where we can connect to that, to that zone and to that energy. And as we open ourselves up to the different tzaddikim, we can feel their energies in different ways. We can feel what a Baal Shem Tev is giving us. We can feel what 
the holy Rav Shitzer is giving us. We can open up this energy and we can say, I want to be connected to HaKadosh Baruch Hu through that Mayan. I want to experience through that channel, through that Sinar. And I want to be connected to Hashem through all the different scenarios until ultimately, Mala Aretz Deas Hashem Kamayim Le Yom Machasim. How does that happen? Through Kol Knesset Yisrael, through every single one of us. That's why that's why we even make the bracha of Chacham Arazim on six hundred thousand people because each one of us is 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 a unique piece of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. And when you have six hundred thousand different perceptions. When you have the, the Tzaddik Yisrael Olam, his perceptions convey an incredible amount. But when you have so many different perceptions, that opens up a certain level, which is so all-encompassing, or it's enough encompassing, that we can then make a bracha that, wow, there's already, I can see so many different perceptions. And the way that we can connect to these other people, sometimes you don't have to agree with them. But we need to open up to ourselves to them. We have to be mukhan. We have to open up in our hearts to say, even if I disagree with someone, and even if, Mamish, we don't hold like the pshat, right, we know that, that shamai, um, be shamai, be makam, be silel, ain't a mishnah. Not that we just don't paskin, it's pshat, it ain't a mishnah, the Gemara tells us. And yet, even so, it's Torah, akdoisha, you could connect to the Chaya Chaim when you read the words of be shamai. So, too, when we hear the stories of the tzaddikim, when we hear the stories of, 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 you know, our Zaydas and our Babas, and when we connect to all the Tzaddikim and all the Yidin, we can open up this channel. And that's what we're here for tonight. We're here to connect. We want to connect to the Holy Rib Naftali Tzviv and Rib Menachem Mendel. We want to bring His energy into this world so that we too can be beacons. We are beacons. We need to recognize that. And I love, I love the fact that the Holy Rab was just, he was connected to everybody, open to all the different zones. I want to learn from everybody. I want to connect to everybody. And I bless us, bless you, I bless me, that we should mamish be open to learning from everybody, open to connecting from all the different tzaddikim and from our friends. I want to end off with one beautiful, beautiful, beautiful piece from the Holy Rav Cook, And it's such a beautiful piece. I think it's just, the, it's, the way to, it's the way to come home. Mamish, the way to come home. It'll go. This is a piece from the Sefer called Iris. In Iris, there's different Iris. There's Iris Me'oifel. And in the Iris Me'oifel, there's Iris Atchia, and this is number 72. Hadveikus haritzonit v'hamada'it hadimyonit v'hamaasit. The, I don't even know if I could translate all the words here, but the the the, vacus, the deep connection that we have with the, the deeper tzoyness and and on the informational level, oops. The the imagine the imagine the imaginative and the physical and the action. Kishehin mit argenot biyachad hein potchot et sinorot achayim shel talale haratzon. That when these all these different parts of who we are. When they join together, they can open up these incredible channels, the incredible tsinoros of life. And Mamish, the different tzaddikim, that sometimes each tzaddik has a different inyan. But when we bring them together, they open up this, this web, like Abba said, this, and this, this beautiful energy, these, these flows, these waterfalls that are all shining down. Asher l'chayim ha'adinim chayi ha'emes. Mamish, they're bringing this such this, this 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 chayim to the world. She'ein katsa la'oisher kavodim kavodam leziv maskam. That this mamish, there's no end to their incredible, their 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 glory and to the shine and their sweetness. Asher tzadikim aroyim aylamim bechayim yoidim umarkishim ktsas erkam. That the tzadikim, that mamish, that that see that aroyim aylamim bechayach. They see their, their whole worlds in their lives. They mamish see everything in their moment, like we said it tonight. They mamish, they see the whole world. They see everything in every moment of existence. They, can, they experience this. They taste of this. I don't know what that word is. And this is like Mamish reaching out to us, to each and every single one of us, to shine the path of Hashem. To clear out every obstacle that's, that, from that, that's holding back the beautiful shine of this incredible light. 
החיים האמיתיים של הדבקות האלוקית האמיתית, from living a true, authentic life of being connected to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, שהיא רק היא מקור ההצלחה ומגמת החיים והאהבה יקולה. That ממש, that's the whole focus of everything that we're doing is just to live a life connected to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. גמה אומללים הם הולכי חשכים. ואלט, וואו, וואו תו דה חבר'ה דה רג ווקינג אין דה דארק. מה הלווים הם עושים שאין להם אלוקי אמס? How sad for them, how painful for those that don't have a connection with the true God. במדעם וברצונם, בדמיונם ובמעשיהם, in their minds, in their desires, in their רצון, in their imagination and in their actions. ומה מאושרים הם המסלחים לפני השם, and how praiseworthy and how blessed are those that are walking with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, asmechem ba'arzivoy, that are happy with the incredible shining light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, v'shmo yegilun kol hayoim v'b'tzid kasa yarumu. Gvat. Alev, in his name, we're mamish with besimcha all day, and in his incredible tzidkas, in his righteousness, we are exalted. Alev mitkavetz mirov tzar al ha'afela ha'ayuma. The heart is... Is, uh, is, is in pain, it, 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 it is clenches from the incredible pain of the, of the overwhelming darkness, <speaking in Hebrew> that the poor people, the chevra that we know, and sometimes at moments that we ourselves have when we're sitting in the incredible darkness, Gavalt, we all know the pain of being in those moments. <speaking> in <Hebrew> the, the inner... Alignment pushes, this, this is, this, like this drive inside is pushing our neshama that says, I need to shine this incredible, this incredible torch of, of authentic living, of being connected. The harim neis l'rabim, to stand up and scream to the world and reveal it all out. Ha-Yisrael otzer chayim hu ba'olam. The Yidin, the Jews, are mamish, this wealth. We, have, we, we, we are standing and we're holding this incredible warehouse of a uh, uh, connection to the essential life to chaim to existence for the whole world and our existence we're mamish connected simply a jew existing is a revelation that with our new life that we are having and with the new life of what it means to be a jew as we are reborn into the, the, at the end of time, we're mamish beginning to shine out again with our tchia, mamish the whole world will live. And it will remove this mask that's cloaking the whole world and all the other nations. This darkness of not believing in a Kaddish Baruch Hu, which is this incredible, uh, disgusting death that is mamish for the, on the whole world. V'yokum Yisrael al Raglov, and the Jews will once again will stand up on our feet. Yisromeim begvura ba'aretz chemdaso. We will be exalted with a great strength on the land that we have always desired. Yabia et imrat nevuato mim kor chayin nishmaso. We will begin to explode and to begin to speak out the the the, the and we'll we'll be shining in the physical realities the the, the prophecies of old times that mamish is the is the, the source of where we've all come from this is not just like we're we're living prophecies we're living the answers to the prayers that we've had for years it will arouse and it will wake up and it will be it will rejuvenate those little seeds of life that have been scattered throughout all the people in, in, in the level, in, in all human beings, in all existence, in all life forms. It, that chiyas will once again be bursting forth. Ka neshama tehalel ya, hallelujah. Gevalt ka neshama tehalel ya. And this is mamish what it means. This is mamish the, 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 as, as we open up. Va'amich kulam tzadikim. We come to the end of time and we're mamish open. This is it, this is it. This is it, Chavra. We're mamish having a tchia, and this is the tzaddikim that we're connected to, and this is the tzaddikim that each one's shining it together, and we bring all these pieces together. <sighs> Our generation is a generation of synthesis. We're a generation of bringing all these different parts together. We're, we've moved on. It's not just one tzaddik here, one tzaddik there. Every one of us, 
we are synthesizing so many things on every on the little bookshelf that a simple yidla has in his house. He has more books than an entire village has. He can synthesize information. We can synth synthesize emotion. We finally have a certain level of 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 ashirut. Uh, uh, we have a wealth to be able to have downtime to be able to stop and go and say what's really happening inside of me let me synthesize all the emotions all the machshavas all the actions let me make space let me i need to collect from all the different generations before i need to bring it together like that funnel and be able to bring it out and say we're finally going to make an echad out of all these different pieces i bless you and myself and the whole world Gevalt. may we shine the light of the tzaddikim ba'amech kulam tzaddikim la'olam yushu aretz Nature, Matai, Masaya, Dai, Lehispaer, Gavalt, let us bring a Nachasrach to Kadesh Baruchu, a Nachasrach to ourselves, Nachasrach to the whole world. Gavalt, may we all join together and sing to Hashem, Yachad.